impetigo is one of the reasons I went in to dermatology. I got impetigo when I was in college. I was a college freshman and I started developing this rash on my face shortly before Thanksgiving break and I was freaking out about it. And I had my parents schedule an appointment for the Friday after Thanksgiving so I could get it looked at. But I flew home Wednesday night, the night before Thanksgiving, and I had makeup on and so nobody really noticed anything. Went right to bed. Thursday morning, woke up to have breakfast with the family that loves me, and they said, what on earth is going on with your face? <laughs> it was not pretty, it was not pretty. But fortunately, dermatology to the rescue. I saw my dermatologist on Friday. She took one look at me and she said, oh gosh, this is impetigo, but we can manage it. She got me started on an oral antibiotic, a topical antibiotic, and some vinegar soaks, and I was better by the time I went back to college on Monday. Treatment for impetigo is very effective and works rapidly when you're on the appropriate treatment. Impetigo is a superficial skin infection that's caused by either staph or strep bacteria. Staph is most common, strep is second most common. And these bacteria are all around us. We, they live amongst us. And it just takes one little break in your skin and just being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that bacteria sets up shop and festers. And then it will spread from spot to spot on a person once they have it. But it's easy to diagnose. We can take a look at it. Typically, we can diagnose it visually. If we need to, we can do a swab culture and help confirm the bacteria responsible. I typically do like to do a swab culture because I like to know which bacteria it is and I like to make sure that it's not resistant to any antibiotics that I might want to use. But while that culture is cooking, we can get that treatment started and get people looking better and feeling better very quickly. A relatively common oral antibiotic is typically used. It's called cephalexin and it can treat both staph and strep, so it's a good choice. We will typically also do a topical antibiotic called mupirocin two or three times a day. And back when I had impetigo, my dermatologist had me do vinegar soaks and I thought they were extraordinarily effective. And so I will typically have my patients do them too. What you do is you take uh, one part vinegar to four parts water, you mix it in a bowl, you place a paper towel, you kind of dampen it in the solution, and then you drape it over the affected area, let it sit on there for 10 or 15 minutes. Then you remove it, pat it dry, and then put the topical mupirocin antibiotic on it. I really felt like it helped me get better faster because it helped remove the crust, and I think it helped the topical antibiotic penetrate better. So I encourage vinegar soaks for my patients uh, with impetigo, as long as they're willing to do it, willing to put in the time with the vinegar soaks. Impetigo is interesting because it's a very impressive rash, but often there's little to no symptoms associated with it. You look at it and it looks like it should hurt, but typically it doesn't. Um, I remember when I had impetigo, maybe there was a little bit of a tingle at times, but really it was more the look of it that bothered me than the symptoms associated with it. Impetigo and uh, the cold sore virus can look very similar. In fact, they can really look identical. And there are situations where I'm not sure which one it is. What I do for my patients in those situations is I do a swab culture for both. You can swab for the bacteria that causes impetigo. You can swab for the virus that causes cold sores. And while those tests are cooking, I go ahead and start a medication that treats impetigo and a medicine that treats cold sore virus. So we're covering our bases either way. Eventually, the culture results will come back and tell us which one it was, but in the meantime, my patient is better, and that makes me happy. Impetigo is definitely more common in our younger patient populations. Kids, teenagers, that's kind of the classic demographic for impetigo. Um, I was even a little bit old when I had impetigo being in college already, but you know, I was meant to be a dermatologist. I think impetigo inspired me to go into dermatology because I saw how quickly my own dermatologist was able to help me with this mortifying facial rash that I was like, geez, this dermatology stuff is awesome. I think that's something I wanna do. Impetigo, until it's treated, impetigo will spread. You will see it happen actually pretty rapidly, where over the course of every day or two, you notice new spots. 
And so it can be pretty psychologically devastating to be a patient with impetigo or the parent of a kiddo with impetigo because literally every time you look at your child, you're like, oh my gosh, that spot's new, that spot's new. It evolves right before your very eyes. Impetigo should absolutely be treated by a medical professional. It is extraordinarily uncommon for impetigo to resolve on its own or resolve even with home remedies. I'm a big fan of vinegar soaks for the treatment of impetigo, but only in combination with appropriate medicines as well. Appropriate oral antibiotics, appropriate topical antibiotics. The vinegar soaks add something to those, but they are not enough all by themselves. Recurrent impetigo is not common. It's possible, but it's not common. In fact, if I meet a patient that reports history of recurrent impetigo, I start to wonder if maybe it was the cold sore virus because the cold sore virus commonly recurs. And so that's the sort of patient where I might say, hey, call me the next time you have a spot because I want to swab it and be sure. I will say that as a person who suffered from impetigo in college, you do go through a cootie phase where you live in constant fear of it coming back. I was paranoid of the impetigo returning for like three or four years after my incident. So it's common to worry about its recurrence, but it's actually pretty uncommon for it to recur. One good thing about it is that it typically does not scar, which is actually pretty amazing because when you see impetigo, it can be a very impressive rash and you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, I think that's going to leave a mark. Actually, most of the time it doesn't. And it's because the process is occurring so superficially in the skin that it doesn't affect those deeper layers that can contribute to scarring.